record. Hey, Savannah, how's it going? Hey, Dave, I'm good. Good, I'm glad to have you on. Thanks for joining. Everyone who's watching, this is the first episode of Growth Talk, where we talk about growth and personality stuff and how those are kind of entangled together. We go into like the guests sort of past and look at their timeline of how they've developed as a person and kind of what they're doing now and how OP or whatever system they're into has kind of uh, helped them. So, so Savannah, you are an ENTJ, but not just, not just any ENTJ, you are a jumper. ENTJ. I'm a jumper, which means I'm a little chaos too. Yeah, you're like the, the sensor ENTJ for the, yeah. for the, yeah. So for the MBTI folks that are listening, uh, what a jumper means is instead of T E N I, it's T E S E. So, um, kind of what you guys would call the looping thing, I guess. But it's not really a, according to this system, it's not a loop. It's just another personality type that we don't have letters for, so we just say E N T J. So, yeah, I thought we could start off with a little bit about your type before we get into it. Um, so, starting, so let me make sure I have your type right first. So it's F M T E S E. Play, blast, sleep, consume. Yep, that's okay. right. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, so let's start at TESE. So like, so what are TESEs like? What are like the the biggest things that you notice when you look at other people of your type? Well, like what stands out to you for the most part? Um, we want to be understood. We want to okay. convey what we're trying to say very clearly. So that would be off the bat what you could pick up first, probably. Okay. And then uh, the TE personality wants um, to get the group on the same page. Um, and so a lot of times you can see some leadership skills in a TE and they just want to, um, yeah, triangulate and come with this, they want to come up with solutions, but they want to kind of get other people's opinions and thoughts as well. And then um, there's a lot of uh, back and forth problem solving verbally that really probably would be an indicator of a TESE. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess the sensory part is very important. There's a, there's a, um, even if a TESE is pretty creative, there's a grounded in reality um, sense to them and how they navigate the world. So uh, sometimes I even get stuck in the moment and not really thinking about the future at all, where I'll just be so present with what's going on with every sight, sound, smell, that I kind of get lost in um, what could be going on with the future <laughs> i can relate to that certainly yeah so it's like i kind of think of it as kind of like a very team oriented istp in a way it's like it's like you guys we're kind of both going towards the same thing where we want things to work in reality i think i'm just kind of going inwardly to see how reality would be whereas i feel like you guys are more doing it as a group like what do you think what do you think what do you think what do you think what do we all think yeah let's do it sometimes i can't get a base feel of what i'm gonna do without really talking it out with someone uh, and that can be trouble sometimes <laughs> yeah yeah i think both ways are trouble like when like like when you're ti it's it's um you only can do it by yourself so when you're in environments where you have to do it with a team you're just like i don't know what my brain doesn't work like that you guys either i figure it out or you figure it out there's no in, <laughs> in between for us <laughs> like sometimes like you have to unplug to even really yeah it's in my brain it's, it feels like i'm too slow in a way it's like i have to i have to really put everything into the t and if i'm doing this with everyone then you know then it just breaks down you know i can't do that it's tough um so the t okay so that's kind of yeah so and you said you touched on a bit about making things clear so it's like the the st responsibility i can yeah, definitely relate to that. You want clarity, the TE and the SE. And then being really involved with the, like the here and the now with the sensory, right? Smells and noises and the way things feel, all that stuff. Uh, with, with you, especially visually, uh, visual stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, 
I guess you would gravitate towards it more. Can you talk about being FM? Like what's, what do you think some of the hallmarks of, of sort of feminine, having feminine sensory and masculine uh, TE are like? I mean, feminine sensory almost doesn't feel like a savior until you really mm. think about it yeah. because you can't always remember exact facts. You remember the idea of it or the concept. That's where your memory stays with it. And so it pops up. So in my mind, it pops up like an image. Okay. So sometimes I'll see it happening, wheels turning, things going, um, or like even just, let's say someone's name. I don't always remember their actual name unless I've seen it on paper, but okay. I'll remember their face because it pops up in my mind like an image, right. which, um, yeah, maybe happens to other people who aren't visual either, but um, it just has been more like that my whole life. Um, I remember because my dad and my one of my brothers is visual too, and we used to talk about just like how you can recall memories as if you're watching a movie mm -hmm. or it doesn't always stick an idea, a concept, a fact, a data point doesn't always stick unless I can visualize it in my mind or if I've seen it working in reality. Okay. Otherwise, sometimes it really is hard to kind of grasp or keep as a memory or as a thought. Okay. It just kind of wishes away. And then also, um, yeah, feminine sensory is really funny because you're very aware of, yeah, the five senses in such a real way. Um, I can be more sensitive to certain smells or sights or sounds, um, maybe in a way that other people aren't. I do have motion sickness and someone maybe thought that that was kind of tied to feminine sensory too. Okay. And, um, oh man, there was a new discovery that came up with, but I couldn't can't remember. Yeah, when I'm trying to remember things, I have to go in my mind. I can't, mm -hmm. it doesn't just recall uh, like okay. um, on the surface. I have to like think yeah, about it in my mind. It. So, like, do you, do you tend to think in pictures rather than think in words? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Like, sometimes almost... I can't think in word, but I just have it in my head. I'm seeing uh, okay. it in my mind. That makes sense because, like, the, the concepts are usually like not. Like a concept is not usually something that's in words, right? Like facts can be in words, but a concept is usually like some sort of abstract model that you visualize usually, right? Yeah. They're kind of, yeah. yeah. So like, okay, so one thing I wanted to talk to you about, and we kind of talked about this before on Discord, was like the masculine TE stereotype, the TE monster stereotype. Yes. So it's like the masculine <laughs> TEs is the stereotype is that they're super aggressive, or they're monsters, they're whatever, but... Obviously, after talking to you after like for like one or two minutes, you realize that okay, the stereotype doesn't fit, even though you're masculine TE. Yeah, do you, do you have any thoughts on that on that stereotype? Um, it's it's hard to overcome if everybody kind of believes that's their impression of it, and sometimes right. they have seen maybe that masculine TE come out in like a demon state or mm -hmm. in just a really aggressive, angry time. And that's what's stuck in people's minds. But um, <laughs> yes, I can step on people's toes because I am very direct mm. when it comes to like the clarity of a situation. I don't view it around the bush. Um, the, the cat energy that like in OPS, Dave and Shan have talked about, I don't, I don't do that. I just, I'm very direct. I want to like handle the situation up front before it becomes a problem. Sure. And sometimes that can be considered um, not very socially acceptable. Even if I'm not yelling or angry or being monstrous, it still can be intimidating to people. Um, and then sometimes there are, yeah, the stereotype of, like a TE person or, or just a thinker in, in general, a TI, um, that we're not like caring, compassionate, or, um, kind is just, just plain like a misunderstanding Sure. because if we're just trying to be direct and get what things, what these <laughs> get, get the group going, get everybody on the same page, yeah. there's like a directive and I am taking action it doesn't mean I don't care about people's feelings and values. 
Absolutely. And just more on that. And um, yeah, I mean, also, I think one misconception that people kind of think is that if if someone's been masculine TE and they have trampled on people, they continue to do that. But the truth is, I care about people deeply. And mm -hmm. as deciders, we value um, those. Co the conflicts are heavier on deciders. Yeah. So we prioritize like working those out more. So if I had a situation where I was coming on too strong in my life, or maybe I even like, there have been there have been times where I was too direct by with someone, they did not appreciate that. And they did decide they don't want to be my friend anymore. I also take from that situation and learn from it. Like that doesn't yeah, mean absolutely. I'm going to be repeating that cycle. Because I value those people and I, I can learn from those conflicts. So sometimes the world helps you work on those more masculine functions. If you have been a monster like once, yeah, you can work the world gives it. you quick feedback on that. And see, <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I um so like for me like when I've so I've talked to a lot of people who are masculine TE and for me it doesn't feel like they're aggressive it feels like it but there is a difference in communication to where I feel like it is it is very direct and a lot of very assertive and I think it comes off very confident a lot of the times it feels very solid it feels like they know exactly what they want to say to you and it's very yeah. clear usually right and so I think like from a I think other masculine TEs don't see it like it, if, if a masculine TE were to talk to another masculine TE, there wouldn't be this sort of like, oh, TE monster, because you guys understand what's going on. From a yeah. like, feminine DE perspective, it's like, wow, if I talk like that, that would usually mean that I'm angry. For me to be very direct, I have to be like upset. So it's easy for us to project that onto you and think, oh, they must be upset at me because of look how they're talking to me. I don't talk to people like that. And it's not that you're even being rude or anything like that. It's just a different style of communication. And when it's different, it's easy for us to to label it as something that it's not, right? That's kind That's of what, yeah. yeah, because our perceptions are who, how we are, and so other people must be that same way. Exactly. Yeah, you project that onto everyone else. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is, I mean, which is, I mean, it's like we're aware of that, or at least I guess both of us are. But man, it's hard to like override that because you're just doing it all the time. The way you yes. see things, it's always kind of through your own lens and you have to take a step back and be like, oh, shit, okay. I, I need to treat this like a separate person and not like it's another me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. So something that my children say now, yeah. which obviously they learned from me, is like, I'm not trying to be mean and I don't need to hurt your feelings, but, and then they some, say something very direct. Okay, <laughs> they nice. Keep saying <laughs> they, they're like, they pat it first, right? Oh. Okay. Is that how I approach the situation all the time? <laughs> so yeah. I really do preface, hey, I, you know, <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean, but this is what's going on. And then maybe people understand that I'm not actually purposefully being aggressive. Right. I'm just... Sure. Yeah. And yeah, that makes sense. I gets like, yeah, misunderstood a lot. I mean, even with like, so Shan is also masculine TE, but she's not a like she's not a monster I, like i've i've yeah. had spells with her and there's no like i haven't really yeah i experienced the 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 monster thing so much myself and it, but it like but yeah you're kind of like just hearing about like well i think one of the problems is like the the definitions or at least the old definition for masculine de was shovey and so mm -hmm. now you assume people are shovey if they have a masculine de which it's, I mean, it's not really shovey like that shovey. It's just very, it's like direct. And sometimes that can be interpreted yeah. as shovey, but yeah, I don't know. You have shovey people and you have not shovey people. And that is completely independent from what type they are, I think. Right? It's another way of it's saying someone's an asshole. If they're shovey, that's not like a nice thing to say about someone's <laughs> shovey, right? Yeah. I feel like I've seen feminine DE people also be shovey when they're trying to blast and they can't get people on board or they haven't narrowed right. it down properly. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they've lost people, and so they should be more ST clear, and then they're being shovey. 
and it's like okay but it, it, there's a reason it's not working you right. know yeah they're chevy in a different way like they're chevy about what they want to do i know i see that mm -hmm. in myself with masculine ti like no i want to do this sorry I'm not... <laughs> <You know? laughs> and they're like i, I could that. do that <laughs> yeah, yeah. working on that but yeah it's tough um Cool. So, okay. So we've gone over the, the visual or the, the modalities. We've gone over your kind of your functions a bit. So what is it like uh, with consume last? What, what does that uh, look like? How would you see that in somebody? What are some, like, what are the hallmarks of being, let's say, consume last? Before I was typed, I thought it meant somebody who didn't read much, you know, mm -hmm. like, Which okay, a lot of they like, that, like to read the yeah. pamphlet, but mm -hmm. like, I'm the one who reads the directions and my husband doesn't. He's higher consume. Oh, yeah, I'm hiking too. I never read instructions. I just go right into it. I don't have time for that. <laughs> um, okay, so consume demon. So mine specifically is SEFI. So it has everything to do with consuming for the self. Okay. And that has to do with kind of building on your worldview and your values. So you know, even just like your beliefs and things. Um, and then like, yeah, just investing time in how you are, man, I'm trying to word it. Having a solid foundation for your identity for the self. So I'm trying to think of examples now, but I mean, it basically had more to do with um are there some can you can you give us maybe some anecdotes where like the, that's kind of hit you in the face maybe okay um so that i mean maybe the stupidest one that happened kind of recently was Good like advice. on the discord server mm. when you join you're supposed to read the announcements and then you say you're a class member or you're not and you get a certain code and there are rooms or mm. what are they call them chat places where yeah. class members aren't like allowed in and you can't even see them and uh i was on the discord for like months and i didn't even know that it wasn't coded right and then somebody was saying hey we're all chatting in this one air room or something i I keep calling it a room because that's just how I picture it in my mind. Yeah, but, I don't know what um, channels, maybe? I don't know. Rooms? Channel, channels, sure. Yeah, okay. Let's use them. Yeah. <laughs> so they're all in one channel and I don't have access to it. <laughs> and I really did freak out. I was like, okay. have they been talking all this time in other areas and I missed out uh, because okay. I didn't read the instructions? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Didn't care. Yeah, I could see that. And, and even. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and it was to the point of embarrassment. So like <laughs> Oh, okay. I think that's the biggest thing is that you're embarrassed about that. I think because I do that shit too. The difference with me is like, oh well, I just didn't read it. You know, and I think it's when it, when you're a demon you're embarrassed about it. like me when I like for blasting, like if I if I screw up a blast and I'm just stuttering the whole time, oh super embarrassing. Like I want to go hide somewhere. Whereas for you, if you kind of probably if you mess it up a little bit, it's probably not a big deal, right? Like it's No, I try to make a joke about it. Yeah, there you go. I went there. Yeah. For a minute and then we can all laugh about it right yeah <laughs> but it's like a, the, the fear is there right that's with your last one the fear the fear of like oh god i did it again because it has been like big things i can't remember specifics but it was kind of like how dave described it <laughs> he's like driving by and there's school dance going on and how did everyone not tell me <laughs> <laughs> even though there were probably signs all over the school that he didn't yeah. read yeah. you know there have been situations like that where it's like i didn't get the memo but it's like to an extreme level or that it keeps happening so it's mm -hmm. like okay on top of this on top of this on top of this and um yeah so reading things checking my own email like this these stupid things that just like are for the self not just like i'm aware of what everybody else is doing but I wasn't reading my own stuff or like investing in my own, I don't know. <sighs> is, it a, is, it like a, is it a pain in the ass to consume stuff or is it just something you don't feel so, like? So, I mean, I will just go all in on things I already know about 
but I want to know more about it and I really like it. So it'll just be like a more narrowed focus. Okay. And then like, I, I'm not seeing the whole board of what to consume. Mm -hmm. And then I do just have like a smaller capacity for it. So like I really, I'll try to read something and I already am like maxed out. Okay. So I'll just read it and I didn't uh, retain it. So, so you like you burn out on it a bit, I guess, right? Like you can't yeah, I could be out. consuming the same yeah. amount as like a savior consume, but it just doesn't stick. Uh, okay. Oh, that sounds like a pain in the ass. Okay. It is. Yeah, especially because your consume is like double, double yeah. feminine too. So it's like super wavy. It's super like not uh -huh. solid, right? Okay. So yeah, that's how it is with my blast where it's just like, uh, it's just like, I don't know. Like somebody with blast, they they have like a like a giant like machine gun. Me, I'm like blowing spit wads out of a like out of a straw and it just beep, just barely hits you. <laughs> and it's just gentle, and you're like, oh okay, no one's listening. All right. Yeah. It's like double <laughs> double activated masculine consume is just ah, 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 ah. and then when I have to give information out, it's. Beep. <laughs> so it's, it's so weird. Yeah, I read that one. It was good. <laughs> I watched that one. What did you learn today, Dave? I've, you know, I uh, just stuff, you know. I don't know. Like that's, but you studied for eight hours. That's all you learned. Well, I know what I learned, but like I'm not going to tell you because like I can't. I can't physically can't tell you about it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, yeah, it's a pain. Cool. So we've we've gone over your type. So I think we have like a good idea of what that looks like. So actually, let's get into like the the main focus here with growth talk, and let's get into let's get into you. Let's get into like what things were like when you were young. I think that's maybe a good place to start. Like so, so what was little Savannah like? That's my uh, that's right. It's kind of a broad question. Maybe I need to narrow that down a bit. But um, I was a really compliant child. Um, okay. I remember my dad telling me to smile all the time, and I really felt like. I got rewarded for making people feel happy. So okay. I kind of felt like <laughs> I was supposed to entertain everybody. <laughs> okay. Um, when I was two, I was actually in a Huggies commercial. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Do you have it? Do you have like it on, is yeah. it on YouTube somewhere? <laughs> okay, you have to show me that sometime. I'd like to see that. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I was just... Um, praised for being compliant. Um, my mom said I was really creative. I drew a lot. And then like, as I got older, I have, I'm the oldest of four. Okay. So um, my brother who's two years younger than me, uh, he used to just put me in my place all the time. That was the other thing that's kind of funny though. <sighs> being like masculine te is like mm -hmm. if i was um mouthing off too much like he put me in my place or you know <laughs> lower blast so he would just kind of smack uh, me which is what just was his type do you think um so okay so he's definitely observer mm -hmm. um and he's masculine effy kind of ti in the middle oh okay yeah. but i don't it's so tricky because he has a lot of masculine SC, but I can't tell if it's at the top or the bottom. Oh, uh, okay. Because this okay. human needs him to really be um, not gather mm -hmm. like at all. Okay. In fact, it can be a trigger if someone just like wastefully <laughs> gathers too much. But okay. um, I don't know. But I think I he definitely is double masculine. Okay. So the masculine FE would come in there and be like, hey, chill out. You're making us feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And if I was hurting my mom's feelings, he would try to just defend her. And I was like, wait, what, what am I doing wrong? We're trying to focus on, you know. Yeah, let's fix this shit. What are we doing focusing on how you feel? Let's get this working. Then we can feel good. Let's just get this okay. working first, right? Makes sense. It was a good education, though. I feel like there's a lot of things that I could have had to learn the hard way that okay. I learned earlier and younger to prioritize yeah a lot of different things um and yeah so um so you could kind of see your saviors then as a kid at least and maybe the yeah, SD wasn't as obvious but um, te was kind of there from the beginning i guess huh 
Yeah. yeah. Was there like a point Pretty in your life where you were just like, um, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is who I am. I make other people happy or I help people with stuff. Was there like a point where you think you like kind of realized that or was it kind of just always like that? Um, yeah, I kind of want to say, so, sorry. So, um, my, so my sister is nine years younger than me. Okay. And so I was extremely protective of her. Mm -hmm. And I think around, I just want to say junior high, that I really just saw myself more as like, I am like a protector kind of person. Okay. I, I defend people who are, I, I don't want to say weaker, because that's not the right word, but I just. You help um, people who need it, right? It's kind of the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um. Yeah. Yeah. I would say it emerged in junior high, but I wouldn't say the problem solving part of me really was. Um, uh, so it was DE and then it turned to T at one point. Yeah. Where it's like, it's, it sounds so much nicer, like a, being a D, like being DE when you're young. Cause you think I was like there to help people. DI is more young <laughs> with TI. I'm like, I thought I was smarter than everyone. And I thought I had to be, <laughs> it's like super negative. <laughs> funny because my best friend growing up was ti so i just loved that about her like oh really, really yeah when we were kids she just thought everybody was there were a bunch of idiots and like <laughs> I was okay and that was good enough for me <laughs> well that's good you could appreciate it because not everyone appreciated that in fact most people did not appreciate that i would say it's uh mm. so like misunderstood yeah. well <laughs> And kind of they're like you, you misunderstood, sure, and also like it, it was it was it had its selfish side, you know, and that and it, it it did make like it did kind of like look down on people, I think, in some ways, and that's not you know it's never good. So like, did that ever bite you in the ass as a kid, being te, oh. being helping people out, or was it just cool back then? Or... Um. So I mean, I became. I mean, my parents saw me as kind of a problem child when I would try to stick up for what I wanted to do. Okay. Um, because I was so compliant the whole time. Ah, uh, you went against the And when I did want to like stand up for myself, and of course I have a giant blast anyway. So it's um, that's where the shoving came from, and it didn't work. Okay. <laughs> and then I would get, you know, punished. But sometimes you have to be put in your place at the same time. There's like a back and forth to that. Do you feel like um, there were moments when you were young that you tried to expose your FI or had like your, the stuff that you liked or you wanted to do and then you felt like somebody pushed against that or you felt like you got some, some uh, a, you know, backslap from the tribe or something like that that made you think, oh shit, I shouldn't do that. I should just continue helping people. Yeah. Um, yeah, there were some times where it was kind of damaging and I didn't really always see it. Um, as, I mean, it almost helps to see that it's a function difference. One of my parents is Effie. And so it really was almost like seen as selfish to do something just for myself. Yeah. Because we yeah. share, we share the values and the feelings and, mm -hmm. um, um, if I want to stand up for something that I just want to do on my own and I wasn't being, it was just more hammered down. Like, you know, we, we, we um, we do things for everybody, you know? Yeah. And then a lot of, probably a lot of it is like, well, I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong, but like once you have like a certain way of being, then that's like, like what everyone sees you as. And then when you go outside of yeah. that, you're like, oh, wait a minute. You don't There's so much bad luck. <laughs> you don't get to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Wait, please stop. Can you go backwards? No. Okay. Go, go upstairs. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like, there's, I, well, I guess it's tougher for you guys with the DI last 
I think, because then there's like, those must be really painful moments where it's like, well, I kind of want to do what I want to do now. No, 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 you don't get to do that. You're not allowed to do that, right? Where it's like, yeah. I think it for becomes the, like a, a dual, it's like, um, I mean, the cycle really is like it's a secret. Like I have to secretly do things I want and not yeah. tell anybody. Yeah. And it actually kind of becomes really like a toxic mentality. Like yeah. I can't tell people that I'm doing these selfish things. And then the brain tells you you're being selfish. So it's like continually like uh, I can't tell anybody I'm doing these. It just, yeah, it's you know, for it. innocuous things. And so one of the, sometimes the crash is that, that, that I, the actual crashes that I've had have been this dichotomy of like who I am as a TE and who I am on the inside. Uh, okay. I have, yeah. feel like I'm almost putting on a mask mm -hmm. and I'm putting on a play. I, I'm not that way anymore, but I have okay. had to work on the two kind of merging and being like almost honest instead of dishonest about sure. like what I am as a D like in the DI mode because I don't feel like I have permission. Okay. And I think that really was accidentally taught in my whole. Um, I mean, I, I know that my parents loved me very much and I know that like ultimately it was appreciated all the things that I did, but like, you know, I, I was so conditioned to kind of be sacrificial that I, I wasn't in plays anymore because there was too much practice after too many practices after school. And I didn't okay. know if it was going to be too much of a burden to get picked up. You know what I mean? And uh, then so would I just stopped being in place because it wasn't going to work for everybody. Uh, um, and I didn't try to get my license till it worked for everybody. I didn't, I just didn't fight for the things I wanted because it was ignored so many times. Mm, comes normal. Yeah. And then you build you know, like resentment, right? Like after a while, didn't yeah. you get pissy and you're like, this is bullshit. I never get to do anything, you know? Like, uh huh. He gets to do stuff. I saw him the other day. He went and did stuff and it was against the tribe and he was okay. Why can't you guys give me that same <laughs> courtesy? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, oh, that's frustrating. Yeah. Okay. I think, yeah, I think that, yeah, thank you for that. I think that paints like a really clear picture of what that looks like when you're young. So like, what, was there a turning point? Was there one point you're like, you know what, fuck this shit. I'm going to do what I like. I'm going to do what my FI tells me. And you know, if it doesn't work for you guys, then you guys can just fuck off. How about that? But okay. Maybe not to that extreme, but was there like a, you know, like a part where you're I like, I feel like there are different cycles of that because you have to keep okay. doing it. You have to keep realigning. Uh, yeah, um, but um, I mean, like as you kind of go through high school, you start going, Hey, I get to be my own person. Mm -hmm. And so that was like a little bit of a, um, uh, building up, but then okay. obviously like going to college, it's like, I get to be who I am yeah, instead yeah. of just my last name or just like who everyone thinks I am because of the family I come from or the church mm -hmm. I go to or the friends I was associated with. Now I get to reinvent myself. And that was, sure. um, it was like starting over like in a good way. Mm -hmm. And so I got to, um, yeah, just dig into like who I really think I am and who I want to be. And then like over time, it still becomes like, okay, now I'm collecting these new people that I care about. And when I care about them, I do start to make sacrifices. Okay. And so, yeah, there were a couple of, um, toxic relationships. Like I think everybody goes through some of those where yeah. there was like wake up call and it was like, Oh, I have created this toxic cycle because I'm the giver and they are the taker. And then I am painted as a bad guy. If I want to do what I want to do as well. So I, yeah, you know, yeah. Broke somebody's heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah, that, that you can't avoid that. I think as you get older, you end up doing that yeah. to somebody, or somebody does it to you, or you know, both. I had, like it's yeah, funny because I had the same like sort of thing in college where I like like I had my first part of college and I like 
uh, lived with some guys and they didn't really like me very much. We didn't get along very well. And a lot of it was because of my lack of, of FE, you know? And oh, then right. when I, I ended up transferring schools, and at that point when I tried, I was like, okay, I'm going to reinvent myself. I'm going to be more outgoing. I'm going to leave my door open and not just be closed off all the time. I'm going to like check in on my roommates and see how they're doing. I'm going to make sure I take out the trash all the time. And, and totally had that same thing where it's like, okay, I'm going to, I know, I didn't know it was FE back then. But like, okay, there's right. obviously stuff I'm not doing. And I got to start doing that and had the kind of the same thing. I wonder if that's like it for most people, like when they go to college, is that like the time where everyone, I guess, tries to reinvent themselves or? Maybe. It's an opportunity to be not what your parents expect of you. And then maybe you do start to like, maybe that is a cycle. Maybe you start to do your demons right away and try it out. And mm -hmm. then you still kind of maybe fall into default or you start to go into like self growth, you know? Sure. Mm -hmm. So like, so we've talked about like TE and FI like pretty heavily now. Like with your type, you're like one of those super double observers, right? Because you're already double activated in I, and it's masculine. Yeah. So it's yeah. like the most balance you could have, like with the with like with the observers. Was there ever like a like an NI issue? Do you have you have you ever had NI issues, or do you have ish, NI issues now, or what do those like look like? Um, just because it's masculine, sometimes I freak out about it being um, not fully planned out ahead. Okay. Because so. I mean, that is just like, I feel like people don't talk about this sometimes, but like if your OI is masculine, you do want it to be planned out a lot better. And mm -hmm. then if you're around a lot of people where their OI is feminine, they can pivot better. And then I, that's where I seem very rigid sometimes where I'm like, okay. oh, okay, hold on. We're switching the plan. And like, it's funny because I'm, I'm SE and I can kind of, uh, yeah, it's just a weird thing because I really just, there's only some things where I'm flexible in and then other things, it's like, I you still have to plan a little bit for this to work. And then I, now that I'm, I almost said now that I'm an adult, <laughs> I've been an adult for a while, but, um, <laughs> but now that I have like a household to take care of, um, I am more responsible for the plans. So then if someone wants to switch it, with little notice, that's when I get kind of not fun. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, fair, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Okay. So yeah, so it's like, it sounds like, yeah, I mean, with that, you probably, it probably doesn't feel like you're SE or NI at that point, right? Because you like, I mean, you're yeah. SE, but it's single activated and it's feminine. But you got all this going on with NI too, so you're just kind of both at the same time, you know? Like, yeah, because if a friend like came by just like right now or like in a couple hours and was like, or proposed that we like go to somewhere I already know, I'd just be like, yeah, let's do it. Because I can be like flowy if it's like a known place. Okay. That the SE is more like, okay, I already know what to expect. I already know what to expect. <laughs> Yeah, like masculine and I would be like, I already know what to expect, right? Like, I, I know what's going to happen if we go to this bar. Whereas for me, it's like, I, you know, we're going to go to this bar and it's like, I don't know what to expect, but I'd rather see another bar because the, even I know even less to to expect, which is exciting. And it's, because that's kind of the, Oh, nice. I got to, I got I'm just going to turn this thing off. It's been making this buzzing sound. I don't know. Can you, have you heard that? Can you hear that? No, I have no. enough. Trying okay. to zero out here. Okay. Yeah, very <laughs> okay. So back to 360 quality, 360p quality. <laughs> Helpful. <laughs> wow, now it feels like super dark. Okay. Ah, it's fine. You know, I gotta quit worrying about the sensor here. Okay, so we've talked about your NI. It doesn't sound like you have like a lot of NI issues. It sounds more like you have more like like a, like a lot of savior NI issues, almost like you have SE issues as well. It's supposed to be in like consume last. Do you feel like you trip up on the SE sometimes? Does that feel like that's a struggle for you ever? Um, so, okay, so the other thing about having consumed last is there is like a trip up on, yeah, new experiences. Okay. So sometimes I really do feel like overwhelmed if there's too many new experiences. Okay. But I also really like new things, but in smaller doses so that's like a very strange 
um, imbalance almost. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes that, I will that makes just sense be though, because like, the new thing and then yeah. I end up not liking it and I'm very uncomfortable. Okay. But that isn't a common out thing. It just can happen sometimes. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. It, it feels like with that, with the setup that you have, there's like just a constant fight between those two. And it was, so what did, what did you think before you got the, you got, um, you got your official type back? Did you see yourself as an I before you got the type? I thought I was any, but it makes oh, sense. Okay. Because I yeah, it would make sense. Feminine sensory assy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really, okay. Because it is more, you know, I'm kind of, the way that my feminine sensory is, I could be considered like more hippie-ish, you know, but not in the any way. So it's right. kind of like, and then I do, I do want to narrow down with the NI. I want to like have a good conclusion, mm -hmm. but, or like a, a narrow down goal so we can move forward. But um, I am still, you know, I'm a really creative person too. And that might be the visual part of it. But I like, after I went to, I got my associates and then I went on to like do art school and um, yeah, I do just need a lot of like creativity in my life, but I think that's the, the sleep hobby part of it too. Okay. Do you do like, what kind of art do you do? Do you do? Um, um, do you, do you I, I used to paint more. Okay. Um, I still draw. Um, and you know, I mean, <laughs> it's easy to decorate things so you okay. can just refresh new yeah, I yeah. imagine you're probably pretty badass at that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about photography? I've heard a lot of visual people are, with yeah. SD are really good with photography. That's what yeah. I'm... When I was 16, my dad got me a camera. Okay. Some people got, but I got a camera. It was real, and so that was just like a a really great hobby of mine. But um, you know, I don't know why this is, but it's like a stupid brain thing and maybe like i think it turned out to be kind of a de thing but like when other people excel at photography i feel like i don't bring value to the table so okay. i still really like taking pictures um you feel like it's saturated oh, i guess to some degree or what you feel like it's saturated like there's already been pictures of this there's already great pictures yeah. my pictures can okay that makes sense but i still just do it for, for myself I just don't want to be, yeah, I think maybe it's also the obligation. Like I didn't want to feel okay. like um, I had to be doing it for other people mm -hmm. because it was for my own. And then it, the pressure's off and then it just feels more um, um, fulfilling. Sure. Yeah. If I, think I, if it, I mean, regardless of type, if you like, if you do an art for other people, then it's like, Somehow it just doesn't work out very well. You know, like if I try to like with music, if I try to make music that sounds cool to other people, I can't make shit and it turns out really horrible. If I make something that I just like and, and it's like, if I make something with the mindset of like, nobody's ever gonna hear this, it's so much easier to make music than with other people in mind. It's like, that's yeah. like the moment where you have to be DIs with music or with, or with art in general. Like, Creativity, like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. like, did you, um, yeah, so you said you're really creative, and I, I think you said your parents also said that, or they're also aware of that. Like, what, what did you do yeah. that was creative? Did you draw a lot when you were young, or was there different yeah. things that you liked? I always had, like, a crayon box with me all the time okay. when I was drawing. My did you have one said, of the mega ones that had, like, 250? Oh, yeah. I mean, those, I those, weren't those awesome? Colors. All the color names I had them memorized. You can ask me what burnt sienna is, and I will tell you. <laughs> did you have a favorite one? Um, I mean, it changed all the time. I think Robin's Egg Blue was a favorite for a while. Okay. Um, I kind of like olive green now, but. Mine was like, I think cyan blue. I don't know if the, how you say that. Let me look it up. Yeah. See if that's it's the right. printer color. I'm just Print oh, wait, printer color. That isn't. Oh, what is this shit? No, that wasn't it. It was like, oh man, did I forget Side. it? This was my favorite color when I was like five. Oh. It was like this ocean blue color, and I loved it so much. I would just draw everything. Cerulean, right? Cerulean? Cerulean? Mm -hmm. It's a C. It's a pretty color. I liked that one, too. I had some This socks. is a really nice one. Maybe that one was it, but maybe it was a C. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's you know that's really sad that I forgot that. Damn it! I now I have to go and look what the crayon box is, and then I'll look at the list. And then, here's that one. And I think I'm right, so I'm like, he'll find out. It's so really. Nice. It probably you might be like that. That is a nice color, but like when I look at it on Google Images, there's like 50 million versions of that. I'm like, okay, which one is yeah. the? Oh wait, no, that's okay, one idea. I'll do it. It's really yeah. crayon. That will give me the. Let's um well, there's a million different color oh yeah fuck this shit okay we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> enough crayon talk we're here to talk about you no, no oh this is crayon talk <laughs> this is crayon talk with dave <laughs> and Savannah. okay so so then let's move on to so how has how has op helped you like was this like a, a big influence on your life or were you kind of already working on this stuff or yeah how was that been? um i mean okay so my parents were into like um personality plus so okay just four personality types and so even when i was a kid i was just familiar with um kind of a generality of how certain people are like maybe four types right mm -hmm. and then yeah i got into MBTI a little bit in college. My freshman year, they typed everybody. And um, I was the only ENFJ. ENFJ, <laughs> okay. Yeah. And my roommate was ESFJ, and we were the only ones like the only um, ENFJs, huh? Like the entire freshman class. <laughs> oh, wow. what, what was the, the one that got the most? Was it INFJ or INFP or something like that? I think ENFP. Oh, yeah, that one gets hit a lot. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, so then I got more into it like a few years later and I wanted to find out what everybody was in the family. And then it was weird because we didn't fit some of those molds. And uh, so then I kind of just moved away from it because it didn't seem like there was many opportunities to like work on yourself. Sure. Uh, but that was before really there was really any like youtube stuff or like people weren't really blogging about, about it yeah. then either so it was just kind of like okay moving on info, um yeah. and i just wanted solutions i want to find how to work on myself how to make you know i was thinking how to make other other people happy and how to be okay um and i think so i've always kind of wanted it's not like I was ever going to be a psychologist, but I wanted a base level of understanding of how people work like all the time. Okay. So I continually wanted to understand how I work and how other people work. And I felt like some of those could be a good framework and a baseline of it. Um, and then, yeah, I did start reading a lot of different like self-help books and, um, yeah, I just feel like people can be um, taking ownership of who they are, they are, their strengths and weaknesses. And um, so I already had a little bit more of like a, you have the tools or can find the tools to like work through imbalances, I guess. Sure. So when I stumbled upon OPS, it was actually more, I was, it was actually for a hobby. I was um, writing. And I kind of got one of the characters wrong because I basically had her, um, well, you know, when you, when you write a story, there has to be kind of an interesting story arc. And I really wanted it to be, I mean, I really was trying to write for the intention of other people learning from this character. Okay. So like a hero's journey where people hit that pivotal moment and they decide, okay, am I going to like wallow in what, going on or am I going to like learn from this and move yeah. forward and and then find you know happiness or whatever it is at the end okay and um and I had her hero's journey wrong and I knew it but I didn't know how to fix it because I was trying to write an ENTJ okay. no an INT an INTJ INTJ um, okay mm -hmm. and she just did not have the right um freakouts and I was like oh gosh I wonder if I should scrap this story or not and then that's when I just like dug back into personality types okay and um I found there was an interview with you actually that I watched oh, really? 
Oh, which one was it? <laughs> I, I can't remember. Probably Benjamin, right? If it was an early one. Maybe. Yeah. It's big. It's kind of fuzzy. Um, and then I found Lee Jo, and she was talking about class and OPS. And then I was like, oh, no, do I really have to look into this? Because I saw it's going to be a whole rabbit trail. Yeah. Is this worth it? Am I going to do this? But I just wanted to understand, I mean, not only just a character, but my husband better. Maybe I could understand my kids better. Mm. My mom and I were kind of butting heads sometimes. And I was like, we, we can work this out. I got to figure this out. So, yeah. So then I jumped in, joined the class. And Shannon reached out to me with emails. And I wasn't... Reached out to you, like just out of nowhere? Did you send something or? She was emailing. And so I just emailed back and forth and she kept responding. And then she said I could send audios too, which was so cool and encouraging. Mm -hmm. And um, I wasn't sure if I was going to get typed because I was just focused on like learning it for other people, which is so interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, yeah. Anyway, when I did end up getting my type, It just, it was so much more helpful than I was anticipating. Okay. Because my, my intention for understanding my type was just to get a baseline of like, okay, if I know what I am, then I know what I, other people aren't, aren't doing or where, where they are and where they yeah, are. Yeah, like a goalpost, yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the tidal waves I've experienced in my life, where my husband and I butt head sometimes um where i don't have to take responsibility and blame myself in certain areas that is someone else's responsibility and by taking it on i'm making it so that some people aren't doing their demons and then vice versa i can invest in myself i have permission i am allowed to be the owner of my whole self and i don't also Okay, so the other thing is I've I've also, I have had friends who are interested in what I like or are tracking what I like or stick up for me when it comes to the FI. So sometimes I wasn't doing the FI. What's going on? That's okay. No worries. <laughs> hey guys, how are we doing? Really good. Got a short intermission here. Um, but yeah, hope you guys haven't been enjoying it so far. I thought it was really interesting, really seeing how how this has kind of played out in Savannah's life and up to this point and really getting her perspective as a TE person. It's been really cool, you know. Uh, me being TI, that's kind of the opposite of what I am. So it's like, yeah, it's kind of a whole new, whole new world in a lot of, lot of ways. So it's been really good. Hope you hope it's been good for you guys too. Um, but yeah, hey, she's back. <laughs> okay. I'm a mom. Everyone hates. Yeah, yeah. It's um, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So. Yep. <laughs> oh man so where were we exactly so you were um talking oh. about uh, you know having permission to do what you want to do and learning about your own personality and it was more helpful than you thought it would be and yeah i mean there are there are ways where you can have like a codependent relationship with people not just re- like a romantic relationship but like yeah. just friends and like even family where you are not taking ownership of all your um, weaknesses and in turn you're helping someone else do theirs yeah and, they're all holding um, their demons to you probably right in some fashion yeah yeah so when let me see so when i had a pretty big crash it was because i wasn't taking ownership of the 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 self-identity part because i had a lot of friends and family who were 
kind of giving me the opportunity to sneak the cake in the back. You know, I'm, I'm kind of kidding, but I'm using the analogy like to yeah. kind of explain how I saw that I could um, do what I want, do what I value, invest in myself, um, only like with, yeah, with the drive's permission, with other people's um, help. And so what I had to do, shoot, where was I going with this? Okay, with OBS, okay. <laughs> so I started working on those things a little bit, trying to just really rebuild because I really, yeah, I did. I had a huge crash around, um, when I was 30, I think. No, 28. Okay, it's vague. No, it's okay. It vague. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense, though. Like, it kind of showed you that, like, okay, I need to take time for myself. And I've been in a lot of situations where I'm giving way too much and not doing anything for myself. And I have this kind of embarrassment when I do things for my own. I feel like I have to get people's permission. And that's totally not the case. It's funny because, like, it's, well, it's not funny, but like, Deciders both have that in common for DE and DI. It's like we both have this whole like we need to hide stuff. Because yeah. I do that too. I hide stuff too. Like when there's some, if there's something TI weird that I do that's just that's logical but would look weird to somebody else or to have to like an yeah. judgment, I have to hide it away because it's like because I don't I don't want them I don't want to feel their judgment. I don't want them to t even say anything about it. I don't want them to be like Dave, why do you put your shoes on the top of your closet like that? There's a reason, okay? I don't I don't want to explain myself. It's right. like, you know what I mean? Like, so it's kind of yeah. like, it's different, but it's the same. We're both hiding stuff, but it's kind of, it's, it's kind of for different reasons, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So I was talking to Manny and like, this was the last Prickles and Goo podcast and I don't, oh, this was after, so it wasn't during the recording, but he was giving me an example of a decider he knew and how he was like having to hide a bunch of stuff for somebody that was coming over or something like that. And it was like from his like double decider view, it was like kind of too much. It wasn't necessary. And he kind of explained it to where it was like, like, okay, like you're wasting so much energy trying to hide stuff and trying to make everything perfect for other people that like you, and you don't need to, you need to instead rely on your ability to handle the conflict, which is actually less energy than trying to make everything perfect. Oh, don't see this. Don't blah, blah, blah. And it was like really enlightening me. I was like, you know what, when you put it that way with, with the energy argument, that actually yeah. save energy by not trying to hide all this stuff and not trying to make everything, whatever, instead of just dealing with it, if there is a conflict, then that somehow was better. Did that, did that make sense? Like, I, don't, I feel yeah. like I kind of was all over the place, yeah? It's more energy to try to like hide your DI and not let anyone look at it or make excuses or yeah. then, then to just like actually like try to fold it into your life, like have time for it. Yeah, yeah. And to and, and same with like if you get into conflict for it. It's easier just to deal with the conflict than to constantly hide shit all the time. I guess that's kind of like what I yeah. what I took from it. So yeah. yeah so, so any matter. Maybe they're not gonna ask for reasons why you put your shoes on the <laughs> Yeah, maybe they're wrong. As a TI person, that's like your like uh, it's such a running joke in your life where it's just like, why did you do it that way? This is really strange and complicated. And it's like, I don't want to explain this to you. Just like, listen, it works, and I know why it works. If I tell you it, you're not going to understand, and then it'll be weird, and we have to talk, and I don't want it. So just you know, so you get good yeah. at just being really vague and just be like, oh well, it happened by accident. I don't know how they got there. You know. I don't... <laughs> because you just don't want to explain yourself, and you feel like. And the decider issues, you feel embarrassed too, because it's like, you know, you're not doing this like everyone else does it. And so you like, you don't know what kind of judgment or what kind of opinion somebody's going to have. You don't know how it's going to make them feel, I guess, with inferior. Right. Life. And you're afraid of making people feel bad. Um, yeah. And mine's fine, so I'm sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you criticize, I don't know. It's just the stupidest thing was like one time, um, yeah. The, new music came out and i was just so excited about it it was like two days in and i'm like oh this thing and then so somebody just decided to criticize the character of the uh, artist and i think it was something so innocuous but i was mad because like how dare you i can just can't i just like this music without yeah, yeah. you like but you're talking to shit. Home. yeah <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> yeah, I totally relate to that. Like I would hide my music from, well, from my dad because my dad is like, my dad um, like doesn't like a lot of things. And so it's like, <laughs> if I have some crazy metal music I'm listening to, my dad would be like, Dave, what the hell is this shit? You listen to devil's music? What's all this crazy? <laughs> Man, you need to listen to this all day. It's bad for your ear. Why are you you, you turn that? You shouldn't listen to that. So I would have to hide it from him because I didn't want to hear all that shit. I just wanted to listen to my yeah. music. Right? I didn't want to hear your bullshit. Let me do what I do, right? And right. It's like that, yeah. So I so I guess from like I don't know. I guess if you're like a double decider, you just like let them walk in on you yeah. listening to your music, and you just say, "Well, this is my music, bro. I'm like deal with it." Like, right. like that's deal with the, it. It's not which as is great. Because they yeah, I wish I had just, that flip yeah i don't know i've been trying to work on it though same same I like oh, the oh, idea oh. Well, to kind of criticize yourself about it being toxic too where you yeah. just like make a joke about it like oh yeah <laughs> joe yeah humor is the best <laughs> Maybe way I'd like to listen to terrible music or something you know yeah yeah exactly so well okay so let's get into that so how have you been working on balancing that fi is, is there anything specific that you've been doing or you just been kind of aware of it or What's going on? Um, man, I just want to think of an example. Um, I just, it takes me a second to really think about it and be like, you don't have to be all in on this. And then um, I also just, I think about how other people can just switch and do that. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just almost think about what would I be like if I was a double decider and okay. then it helps me kind of think about it differently. Um, and then I've just been trying to copy what other people do when they double the side. Okay. Cause it just, it just, it's like, it's like um, giving myself permission to do it, but like, oh, okay. So they did it this way. And yeah, I think my favorite way is just to make it funny. Just to kind of like bash myself, bash you or compliment myself, compliment you or um, I'm trying to think of another way to do it. Yeah, I guess, I mean, I just think even decision making, like I can be too invested in how, how I'm the decision maker or, um, this is a reflection on my character or mm -hmm. this is my identity that I'm rejecting when it's just it's just a simple decision and it's not as big of a deal. I don't know if that, I don't know. It depends on the situation, how yeah, I have to sure. talk to them. Right. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Like with me, <laughs> it's funny. The same thing happens to me when I get asked questions and it's always like, well, it depends on the situation. Like it's hard for me to give like a general answer for everything. Cause it really does kind of depend on the exact situation, like what you're going to do. Right. Because we want to describe yeah. it in S terms, and we can't describe it in S terms. We do. have a specific one, right? <laughs> I feel you there. Okay, that's cool. So, like, um, so yeah. So it's it kind of sounds eh, not quite the same, but kind of almost like fake it till you make it. Like you're kind of seeing the actions of others that are double deciding. Be like, okay, well, like maybe I can do that too, and let's see how that kind of kind of works out a bit. Do you have Do you have people in your life that like? that are double deciding and you kind of watch them or do you kind of mirror them a little my bit? My husband is, okay. my dad and my brothers. My, my dad and brother don't live in the same state, but I still, you know, interact with them sometimes. Okay. And then um, I, I really truly believe that my brother was trying to get me to double decide like a okay. long time. Like sure. when I was a teenager and I was super mad about something and he was trying to like give me perspective and then now learn like understanding op i was like oh that's what he's been trying to like explain to me um so some of those things finally are like clicking um and then yeah i i project that someone is all in on something and they aren't when they're in double okay. decider so i sometimes will just remind myself but it isn't as serious or it isn't that big of a deal or they're not all locked in. They're not, um, yeah, they're not thinking I'm a terrible person or they're not wallowing in. Yeah. The decider okay. side of it, they're still yeah. thinking about the things, you know, and then I have to just kind of think like that. I mean, 
And conversely, like, it reminds me to think about the things more that mm -hmm. cause people to freak out and kind of meet them where they're at and realize like, okay, so when I freaked out about my identity stuff, that was just as huge for him when the computer and the printer like were like having a meltdown at the same time, yeah. you know? And it is because a lot of little things went wrong all day, but that was the trigger. Yeah. Yeah. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's like, um, and then, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I interpret. Okay. Sorry. I'm talking a lot, but oh, I no. just, I yeah. interpret some things as like, Oh, it's my fault mm. that this thing happened. So he's blaming me. And that's not, what's happening he's mad about the printer not that i didn't refill the ink cartridge or yeah you personalized it. yeah sure yeah and so i can remind myself like okay it's it's about the thing we're focused on the thing not the people issue here yeah yeah it's like um for me what helps i mean it's like i kind of have the same problem it's more like hmm, how would i phrase it i feel like with with when you're um yeah, when you're an EJ, it's kind of like, like they were mean to me or they were, but with, I guess when you're DI, it's more like, what is it? Um, damn, I don't, like, I, I can feel it, but I, I don't know, like necessarily describe against it. against me? Is that what it is? Like, mm. they're, they're wrong? I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's closer to it, sure. I don't know if that's quite it. It's, it's like, um. It's like you don't belong. It's like you're separated. You know, it's just like oh, you're, so you're the man. Oh, so yeah. You know, and it's kind of like, and when you get treated like that, it's almost like reinforces that, like, I'm just separate from everyone else, that I'm different and, and different in like a bad way. You know, like I'm right. whatever that the tribe has, has locked me out. The tribe doesn't approve. So it's like less focused on one person, more focused on everyone else. So like a couple things have helped me with that. One thing is, is realizing that, that I'm basically just an NPC in somebody else's video game. That I'm just some actor in somebody else's play, basically, right? They, they don't really know me. They don't really see me. I'm just some dude. You know, and so when somebody treats me like that, it's just because they're just, it's, it has nothing to do with me because they don't even know me. They, have no, they don't have any, it's just person, person A, person B, person 11,207, right? It doesn't even matter. So like yeah. that helps. And also what's helped is like, being around a lot of people is tough. So I try to like, when I think about it as like, instead of me and then the tribe, I think about it as me and then everyone else has a deep and complex life just as, and we're all on by our own. We're all on our own. There's no tribe. Each of us are separate. And when I think of it like that, instead of it being me, everyone else, instead of me and then this, and then Dave and then Steve and then Bob, then I feel like there's almost like a, like, a, I feel like a, like a like a need or a push to bring people together then i feel like the de kind of comes out when i see everyone is separate then it's like oh wait we need to get together what are we doing we're all doing separate stuff we gotta you know but it's hard to have that mindset when you feel like it's everyone else and it's you you know what right. i mean so i feel yeah. like those two things have like helped me i have to like manually think about that and i don't always do that but that's that's been super helpful just that like mindset change you know um but yeah, yeah. i don't know do the opposite where I like even in college I was like wow I'm not just me and a group I'm also one person with their ah, own feelings like the and values ah, okay and um, yeah that's how I've helped balance that too ah okay like myself is just one person instead of yeah because I really like you probably could have asked me at different points in my life like who I am and I was just like my last name or my family or it's my friend was yeah yeah like we had that actually in the we have a blast last group and on this blast last group we uh post videos on we have certain topics and we just make a video which is horrible for us we hate doing that <laughs> you know what I mean? with nobody else on the other side uh, and there was there was one question that i put up it was um who are you and it's just like that was the question who are you and it was like interesting to see what people's responses were because it's like like what do you say to that and you say well I, i'm I'm Dave. I, I'm a, I'm an IT consultant. Um, 
Like, you know what I mean? Like, who are you? What really are you? You can't really express that into words. You can only say stuff kind of about you, but you can never really give them your TIRFI, right? Yeah, you're just going to give them a sense. I would assume people answer by what they're like proud of or how they respect themselves. Yeah. And then if there's a lack of self-respect, then maybe it does come out a little more negative. Sure. Yeah. Or you could, I wonder if it would be like, like DI versus D, if DE would say what other people think about them and then DI would say what yeah. they think about themselves. Probably. <laughs> Which is like... <laughs> depends on if they worked on it or not right that's true yeah because like with with di you 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 like see yourself pretty well but you don't see how other people see you and so you're kind of blind. yeah and then i guess it's the other way around DEs are very aware of how people see them but then they're not really quite sure what they think about themselves and it's kind of like the yeah i usually just say i'm i'm, I'm just a mom like yeah that really kind of sums it up probably but. okay and is that like the thing you're most proud of kind of what you said before or I guess, yeah. yeah. It's probably the the best thing about my life, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, that's the. I wouldn't want to be a mom. I'll say that. That's a tough job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's the it's the backbone of society, right? Like you gotta have when have when uh, you're in management and things go well, you get a bonus. And when you're like in like any kind of, yeah, work capacity, if you had to work overtime, you also get a little, little extra that. money, right? Mm -hmm. And when you're a mom, it's the complete opposite. You don't even get a thank you, do you? You just kind of... <laughs> no. Sometimes I literally just thank myself. Because just pat yourself like that. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta make those deposits in myself. Absolutely. And then I do feel more proud of myself, you know, like that was a great accomplishment. You got through that. That was really hard. And just like good. verbally affirm myself. <laughs> That's good. That's so hard to do though. Cause like you, like even, yeah. even being DI, it's hard for me to just be like, oh, you did really well there. Cause there's always an excuse. Well, it wasn't that hard, Dave. You didn't, you know, you didn't try that. Hard. You could have done better. <laughs> it's hard to really just really just be like, you know, I did pretty good. You know what I mean? It feels wrong somehow. Yeah. To some degree, I guess. Right. Or no. Yeah. It really does. And it feels yeah. very, yeah, self-righteous. Yeah. And if it's like, wait, like, I don't want to be a narcissist here. I don't want to be like, you know, all of my own ass saying like, oh, like, look at me. I did really well. But right. I've been trying to make a point to like do that and just be like, just let yourself have this, you know, holy shit. Like, you, you know. Yeah. You deserve praise. You deserve to hear nice things from yourself. And mm -hmm. then you yeah. project um, like a respectable self-image to others when you already believe it inside yourself yeah that yeah that's definitely true for sure yeah i am um... oh wait what was i gonna say oh yeah yeah let's okay are you are you working on your consume is that something that you're hammering on yeah. a little bit or okay let's so go. before i was an op i was um doing therapy mm -hmm. and um actually it was my therapist who uh, just kind of, I, I, after a certain point, you realize like what I needed to do is like read books that helped me understand emotional intelligence and oh, okay. understand, you know, cognition or anxiety or, um, yeah, just things that I believe in general. And really, um, it, it just helps ground my identity with literal sensory you know okay. so i was working on that before and then i i uh, did some journaling i don't do it consistently i just do mm -hmm. it when i feel like i need to sure i didn't want to put rigid rules on myself and it really does help me kind of process for no one else but me um and it's helped me work through some hard things um and then it was really um once I really understood what having a consumed demon meant, because it's for a while, I was like, okay, so what does this mean? Because yeah. I, I, I was sleep last because I just didn't understand consume. Right. But, um, but even more so, 
now that I've got, you know, been working and understanding OP more and more, um, I can see how when I put the time in and um, just make it a priority in my everyday routine, in my weekly life, in my monthly, you know, there are just so many like small deposits I'm putting in that really just, they add up not only have I seen like less freakouts, but I just seem to be able to na navigate things that are thrown at me better as well. So, okay, cool. That's yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's really good. It sounds like you're like working that into your life more now that you're aware of it, that it's like a demon. Um, so like in general, like what is a, what is it like a, um, demon FI tidal wave generally like, is it just like you just have a moment where you're like, I'm just going to do everything I like, you know, fuck everyone else. I just, I don't care if you get mad yeah. or not. I'm going to go eat those chocolates or my favorite chocolates. And I don't care if you like them or you don't like, I'm going to eat the whole bag by myself and not yeah. even offer you any. Is that how that, I, sorry, I don't know what that Pretty impression much. was. But <laughs> I don't know if that goes along with it. Um, uh, okay, so the worst ones were, yeah, just buying whatever I wanted. That's not conducive to a family, by the way. No. Um, I'm trying to decide how much to share. Cause some you don't have to like share it. You, you don't have to okay. share anything if you want. You, or you keep it super. It can be a dark time where I just do not care about anybody but myself. Okay. Sure. And, uh, I mean, I still love my family, but I just want to unplug because it has been too long. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, just absolutely. plain. Yeah. It's, like, you're, it's then, like your mind's trying to balance itself. It's like it just swings over because you've been ignoring it so long. I would know we're going to have a day where we just do what I want to do. <laughs> and I didn't care about any consequences either for a yeah, little yeah. bit. So, I could, yeah. I can understand that. Um, yeah. It was hard on my marriage, you can imagine. Yeah. And, uh, any um, tidal wave would be, right? I mean, that's probably the, yeah. the most things that like break up marriages are just people's tidal waves, I would think, in general. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It makes so much sense now. Yeah. Um, and then the really, there's, so there's the, the spending, the hiding, consuming, you know, or just like, yeah, I got into like a book series and no one can even get a hold of me or I binge watch uh, you know eight seasons of a show mm -hmm. and um like what you're describing is like every day for me <laughs> yeah but i mean it doesn't sound so bad i know it sounds like probably pretty negative and evil to and maybe there's some aspects of it but it's like and almost like when I hear DE's talk, it's like, yeah, uh, can y'all just have, well, it's harder as a parent, I guess, but can y'all just have just one day like that at least per week where you just kind of like, just me day, I just do what I want. I feel like I would go crazy if I didn't have that. If I didn't have at least one day a week where it was just me day, I couldn't handle that. I'd freak out, you know? Yeah. But it's almost like you need that. Even though it's a tidal wave, it's almost like you actually do need that. <laughs> it's as selfish as it feels, you know? Yeah, so, if I mean, I regularly have like, a babysitter or the grandparents watch the kids then I'm getting those deposits but when it's like a full tidal wave it's like it's never fulfilling I'll uh, just do the crazy cycle and I just feel like the more self-loathing instead sure. so that's when the like I don't know the depression has hit where you just I've just felt like I wanted to disappear into the carpet and I just didn't um didn't see any value in who I am when I'm alone, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And so to be able to be, build on um, that identity back after having just neglected it for so long, it was like, um, okay, you get to, <laughs> yes, you can have 28 Cadbury eggs. Oh, yes, those are my favorite too. Okay, yeah. Go on. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. Um, so, I mean, there was a cycle of like doing it in a healthy way and giving myself permission without it being out of control and then leading to absolute emptiness, like an empty feeling. Uh, but, yeah. but like I am reading this book and I'm proud of it and I can talk about it. I really like this makeup brand, you know, stuff that's like 
shallow too, but like, I am someone who likes this. I am someone who likes that. So when I, so actually, when I worked through some of those things and I could like look in the mirror and like feel confident and know who I was, I got myself these earrings. This was a reward for working on. Oh, they're, oh, those are really cool. Thanks. Wow. I really like those. Like the multi They were from an Etsy shop. Okay. Um, I am part chocolate. Uh, oh, oh, cool. And I'm also Choctaw. From, nice. Um, a Choctaw Nation. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. How cool. Yeah, my uh, great grandmother was like uh, was on a reservation and uh, the whole thing in California. Same. Same great grandma. And... Oh, okay. Wow, crazy. Those She's are really down. those are really cool. I really like. I couldn't really see what they were, but when you like bring them up in the camera, I could like. Yeah. Damn, that's really cool. Yeah, nice choice. Etsy has so much cool shit. We, we, I used to buy dog collars off Etsy. I'd get like the weirdest ones from my little corgi that I used to have. And anyway, uh, let's not get off into Etsy, but they have some cool shit. Oh wait, no, what else? I got something else from Etsy that was really <laughs> cool. I got someone to paint my dog on a mug too. Like they draw the draw the the dog and then yeah. they put it on a mug and then it's like, uh, yeah, I, I really like Etsy. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, also cool. fun to support like artists yeah that too for sure and you directly support them right? you're not supporting them through a website that takes like 80 percent of it you know you're doing it directly absolutely right okay that's yeah so okay good i feel like i understand more about <clears throat> like that tidal wave to to balance things out the the what the opposite tidal wave looks like if if you're interested in hearing that um is like it's more like instead of like having a selfish day it's more like you feel like like full separation from the tribe. You feel like everyone hates you. Like when it's Effie, when it's Effie last, you feel like everyone just disapproves that you're just, a, you know, a piece of shit. You don't belong here. You're blah, blah, blah. Um, it's, it's like, a, yeah, it's like, well it's, well, it's the opposite thing. And it's just more like, and when it's feminine Effie, it's more like you're just in a corner, like basically like crying and then like just, yeah, you know, you turn into like a very, at least for me, because it's like my demons are feminine, right? And so it's like I, I turn into mm -hmm. a very meek, like sort of fin feminine, like, oh, I'm so sad, like sort of thing. Yeah. So for like, oh, like all day. Uh, nobody likes me, you know? Like it's it's kind of the, um, it, and it's a dark place, right? You feel like it does not feel good. It feels like, yeah, it, it feels like you're in the pit of hell and it, and it and it feels like it's not going to change either. At least for me, it feels yes. like this is just how it is forever now. It feels like we're stuck. Yeah, yeah. Like, how do I? I won't get out of this. Even though every other time I've gotten out of it, for some reason this time, no, this time is different. I'm just good. This stuck. is it. This is the end. Yeah, yeah that, that's the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, man. You know, and so it's 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 interesting looking at <clears throat> like the observer tidal waves, and I'm like, really, that's it? You just you did the printer broke and. <laughs> no. I shouldn't laugh at that thing, but it's like, I can't, Yeah, I can't, like, it's hard to take that. I wonder if they look at our problems and they can't take that seriously. They're like, what? People hate you. What are you talking about? <clears throat> Why are you worried yeah. about that? Oh, yeah. I can speak on behalf yeah. of other observers in my life that yeah. they're just like, what do you, what's the big deal? What do you mean? I'm like, my life is ending. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Okay. But the printer. Wait, did your, what happened? Your life's in the, oh, did the computer break? Did your cell phone need to update? Oh, no. <laughs> you didn't tell me I need to delete these photos. <laughs> My cell phone's full. No, the cell phone's full. It means it's going to run really slow and I can't take any more pictures with it. What will I do? It's the end. It really know. is. No, but I used to think they were joking. I thought it was too. I thought it was an exaggeration. Girl. Yeah. Like Dave told me that he like literally will collapse in the puddle of his own piss if his cell phone stops working, and it's like, <laughs> he's like really? I'm just so bad laughing, but <laughs> <laughs> it's like really? I don't. But like, I... <clears throat> so I've, I've I've been trying to get into that like a frame of mind because like, well, just like you when you like were getting into this stuff, you were doing it to understand how other people's minds work. I'm trying to do the same thing. Yeah. But it's so hard to get into what it's like not to double observe, like what it's like to freak out because you because your phone messes up or like, mm -hmm. you know, or I, 
Because, it, I mean, I'm sure it's just as bad. Like, on paper, it has to be just as bad or just as scary. But it's hard for me to, like, I well, just into that. David and Shan did say that, like, decider tidal waves are bigger and they're less okay. often. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. That they're less often than the observer. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. They build up bigger, mm. but we aren't having everyday freakouts, you know. Oh, uh, which would which would make sense because you are running into like thing issues every day. Probably not running into people issues every day, right? Like, how often is somebody rude to you? Or that bad. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So you either get one or the other. You get like massive tidal waves every once in a while, or you get little tidal waves. Okay. I, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm glad you told me that because that does kind of make things seem more balanced, I guess, mm -hmm. for the most part. So I think, I mean, I think that's, I think we went through pretty much everything I wrote down, which is like two things, basically. Um, my week and I. <laughs> but, you know, like, I, I'm really, I'm super happy with this. Thank you so much for being on. And yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to stop recording now and then like I'll we'll talk for a sec. But thanks, everyone, for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave a comment if you liked something or you didn't like something or if you if you if you want to rant or if you want to say something not, or yeah. you, anything you want to do. If just put in the comments for me, I answer them, too, just for fun. Yes, please. <laughs> so we'll, we'll get back to them. And yeah. So thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. And bye bye.